Hello, this is Alex Lafkis. I'm out here with uh, Russ Madden, and we are, oh, we're just dinking around on a summer day, throwing some terrestrial type bugs. Uh, big damsel fly. What pattern was that? That was a scorpion. Scorpion. It's an MFC fly. I think it's in a little different color than, than they have at this point in time, but that may change. Uh, but we're just doing a little terrestrial fishing. I'm going to walk you through and talk to you about some of the strategies when you're blind fishing bigger dries, line management, casting. And we're gonna to touch on some of that. There's gonna be more of these type videos coming out. This is something I'm pretty excited to do where we'd really kind of do some on the water instruction with it. Um, thanks for checking them out. We like, subscribe, and there'll be more to come. That's what that's got, son of a. Oh my God, brace, brace, brace. Oh my God, we're gonna die. Oh my God. Oh, I don't know how you saved us so quick. That is expert rowing. I mean, a split second longer than we'd have capsized. You can call us Matt Hartman. Pull a Matt Hartman out here. Maybe a Matt Verlack. Just start sinking boats. So we're just kind of out here pitching the big dry around. Um, I'm sure everybody's sitting there staring, trying to figure out where we are. You already know where we are. That really doesn't matter. You can do any of this stuff on any section of river that you fish. So, you know, it's more about technique than anything. And that's what we're gonna try to teach you here today is just a little bit about, you know, kind of how we're fishing. You can tell we're not in the biggest river in the world, but we're, I'm fishing, you know, a minimum of 40 feet of line whenever possible. Um, these fish see enough boats now that they're scared of the big drift boat. So being further away is better. And what I'll do a lot of times when I'm starting to get that leader pulled under you'll see that I'm lifting up the rod a lot and that's a lot of that's just to reset your leader that's sinking on you because if you don't do that you're going to be wrapping wood all the time and you'll also notice while I'm fishing this thing is like I will kind of move it just a little bit to get it in the seam that I want to run a little bit of action on some of these bigger dries is not going to kill you um, a lot of this stuff moves a lot I don't like how close I'm getting to that fly, so I'm going to pitch it out a little further there, running in a little tighter in the little shady corner. And nothing home. Keep mining. A lot of what you're doing with the big dry too is it's, you know, you're hitting your spots that whatever you've seen fish in, you know, look good, whatever. They're not going to show every day. That doesn't matter. Like you just keep hitting the best stuff. It's in a grand scheme of things, it's not much different than streamer fishing where you just keep grinding those good spots. And a lot of times eventually they'll show. See, and I was got a little close there, so we're going to go in way tight on the inside seam where you get just that little trickle of foam. The other thing you got to try to do is keep your line as straight as possible with a natural drift. Because as you start getting zigzags in your line, you start getting in real difficult situations to hook fish. They'll eat it, and if you got a big Z in your line, it, the fly goes upstream before it goes sideways, and that's the kiss of death on any of this stuff which is probably what happens to a lot of people when they're fishing at night. They just don't know. Taking flight. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Oh, that's Brooke. Mr. Brooke hanging out up there in the... Ooh, that's a nice brook trout, I think. But they like that swamp water. It is. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Little brook trout like that swamp water like that. That's a pretty good brook trout for standard issue tourist water. Those brook trout do like that swamp stuff. Are well, you trying to get bigger? Whew. I'm angry there. You know, just below, I used to tell people that that big birch was a dude standing there at night. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> it, doesn't it? I don't cast here. Yeah. Failure! Right on the men though, on the twitch. Yeah, they like it moving a little bit. Uh -huh. They're not afraid. So one thing I've noticed too is like as much as we try to go to the light wire hooks, 
with dry fly fishing, you know, obviously to keep your fly up. Sometimes a little heavier gauge, whatever you can get away with, will help keel that fly. Especially if you're using big stuff with big parachutes and whatnot. Sometimes I do tie on a little heavier hook just so I know it's going to land right. And a lot of that's about who's casting. You know, typically if you stop your rod high, the weight of whatever hook you have is going to help pull it down. But sometimes people need a little assistance in that. Well, we just threw, this is one of Russ's bugs. What's it called, Russell? It's a, it's a scorpion, but it's a damsel Washington. Scorpion fly. Custom. Just pitching it up at the junk. I kind of pulled on it to get it out of the way. Oh boy, that. he's angry. Are you keeping him in? Oh, we're good. And I just kind of was pulling it out away from the wood. And there you can see, big bait. Not a giant fish, but not a bad little blind fish in the Michigan fish. Big blue. Because he needed the money. There you go. Here's our bug too. Nice. Nice. Good shit. But you can see a lot of this as I'm fishing. You know, again, it's that 50, 60 foot out in front of the boat whenever possible. Um, you got to approach from distance. You know, if you're not getting that 50 to 60 foot, like a lot of people think double haul is a saltwater thing, but typically your double haul, like I'm using it a lot with a big dry just to get the line speed necessary to move it. You know, the, the big cast is so critical and so many people are so just 20, 30 foot, 20, 30 foot. You're not going to catch much. Like if you're doing 20 to 30, that thousand dollars you spent on a rod is pointless. You're better off spending that thousand dollars on a casting lesson and buy a $200 rod to figure it out. When we get into like, you, as you can see, we're getting into a really tight corner. These are the areas that people really struggle into. And you'll notice like wade fishermen can always catch them in here. These are hard for boat anglers because you get too close to things too quickly and those fish know you're there. So I don't know if there's an actual answer to it. You know, even by casting way out in front of the boat, you know, you run into issues. These fish can really sense where you are. They know every oar stroke. So did I overshoot the main seam? Yeah, but I also want to be as far away from the boat as I can be. In these type of spots, it's pretty much worthless, but I'll throw one down there. Oh, and it got bumped. The only option you got. Only, yeah, it's the only option you got. The only option you got, it's in the seam and there is a drop off there and yep. a little bit of cover. Once upon a time in my life, I threw on one of those with a streamer and just saw the biggest damn boil in the world. Um, they're hard to hook on a streamer because you get such a bad angle on it. But in these little spots, like when you come across, some of this stuff can be good, but it's, you know, I like to crouch down or even sit down to fish some of this narrow stuff. Because if you're not, they're gonna, they see you from a mile away. And you get a little better angle too. So it's sometimes sitting in that drift boat can, you know, mean something. And knowing how to roll cast. A lot of our rivers are small here, and if you can't effectively roll cast, backhand cast, do everything, you're gonna miss out on so much potential. Ooh, when I'm looking for my next cast, it gets plucked off the surface. But that's also, I'm down low, you know. Well, it's probably gonna help you in those situations. It's those spots coming in with the, the cover on one side of the boat and a narrow spot on the other side that sitting down and making that one cast that the other 10 boats are making that's going to, mm -hmm. you know, give you an extra bite or two a day. I guarantee you that. Which is all, so critical when you get on heavily pressured waters, you know, it's, it's being able to make those approaches other people can't, which a lot of it's just kind of understanding fishing one and knowing how to cast too. and most people aren't good at either. Well, we're on our way from the river now. Uh, it was a pretty good morning. We had fun, you know, threw some big bugs around, which is always fun. Got some few, got a few eats. Um, but, you know, we're sitting at, you know, almost noon now, 85 degrees. It's plenty warm. We're gonna call it a day. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully that stuff will help you guys and you learned a little something. As I mentioned before, there's going to be more of these type of videos to come. So let us know if there's anything else you want us to touch on, and we'll go from there. Thanks again.